good evening. We will go ahead and begin, I'm sure, with the rain. We'll have some people coming in throughout the evening. But thank you very much for making time this evening. I know a lot of you are very busy during the parent-teacher conferences, so you might not have been able to make it. Uh, but thank you for putting in that effort so that you could come and be part of the program and learn more about our New Pacific Century Scholars Program. I'm Ms. Dana, I'm the high school principal, and I will be joined by Ms. McRoberts, our Dean of Students, and Ms. Meyer, who is our Dean of Academic Programs. She'll be on her way as well. And thank you to Mr. Lulu for translating for us this evening. So tonight we're going to be talking about big picture overview of our Scholars Program, and then a little bit more insight into what will this time actually look like for students? And how can we help them prepare now for what they're going to be doing at the end of the year? And so this is a program that's been in the making for a number of years now. Um, thinking back about three years ago, this idea really came to the table. And we've been working with our students and with our school about how we can make this a reality for our students. And so we're really excited that we're finally able to move forward and create this opportunity for our students to really excel beyond just learning in the classroom and prepare for their life beyond high school. Good. 오늘 제가 이제 그 PTC 동안에도 제가 그 3차례에 걸쳐 가지고 말씀을 드렸고 또 그날 그 바쁘셨던 분들을 위해서 오늘 한번더 자리를 마련했는데요. 이제 MPCS에 대해서 전반적인 이제 소개를 드리는 자리입니다. 그래서 그이그 해인 교장 선생님 그 다음에 미스 맥라우스하고 미스 마이어가 설명하고 제가 통역을 도와드리도록 하겠습니다. 그래서 그 오늘 제가 저희가 말씀드리고자 하는 것은 MPCS에 대해서 그냥 전반적인 거를 좀 먼저 설명을 드리고자 합니다. 추가적으로 말씀을 드리면 그 여러분들이 사실 굉장히 많은 그 질문이 계실 겁니다. 그래서 이제 두 가지로 했으면 합니다. 우선 이제 전반적인 그큰 소개를 드리고 나서 이 여기 계신 분들이 조금씩 다그 전체적인 케이스가 틀릴 건데. 모두한테 좀 도움이 되는 질문들 위주로 같이 들었을 땐 하고요. 끝나고 나서는 어, 해인 교장 선생님이나 미스 맥라우스나 미스 마이어는 계속 여기 계실 것이니까 그 개별적인 그 질문은 또 그때 또 따로 하실 수 있는 자리를 드리도록 하겠습니다. So this evening, um, there's a sign-up sheet being passed around, and at the end of the evening, we will email this presentation to everyone, so you don't have to worry about taking pictures throughout the presentation or frantically writing anything down. And then if you have follow-up questions, we're absolutely happy to answer those. We'll go through the presentation, but if you have a question, just write it down, and we'll do a question and answer at the end. But we'll also be happy to meet with you after this for more information if you're curious. 그리고 그한 가지 더 추가로 말씀드리자면 오늘 오신 분께 모두 그 오늘의 슬라이드들을 저희가 파일로 보내드릴 테니까 특별하게 뭐 사진을 찍는다, 뭐 노트를 적을 수 있다는 필요는 없으십니다. All right, so the major overview, and some of you have heard this at the very beginning of the year, but in case you need a reminder, um, all high school students will be participating in this program, so grades 9 through 12. It'll be happening from May 6th to June 5th, except for those lucky seniors that will be graduating by then. And so their program will actually end the 1st of June so that they can wrap up before graduation. And the big picture idea of what this is, is it's an opportunity for students to take one of three pathways, either an internship, a research and discovery experience, or a service learning experience. Each year, the students will be asked to do this project, and they will be asked to do at least two out of the three categories, unless, of course, you're a senior, and then you only have one. Um, but each year, they only focus in one category area. So they're not expected to do all three every year. We want them to focus their project and their time each year to something different. Yeah. 고등학교 전반적으로 모두가 다 해야 하는 거고요. 여기 그 날짜가 써 있듯이 5월 6일부터 6월 5일까지입니다. 물론 시니어들은 그 이제 6월 6일이 졸업식이기 때문에 6월 1일까지만 하게 될 것입니다. 여기 보이면 이제 실제로 하게 되는 것이 세 가지가 있는데요. 하나는 인턴십, 두 번째는 리서치 앤 디스커버리라는 이름으로 어떤 프로젝트를 하는 것이 있고 세 번째는 서비스 러닝으로 해서 예를 들어서 이제 그이 발런티어를 한다든지 뭐 어떤 그런 걸 통해서 배우는 것들이 있는데요. 이 학생들이 해야 하는 것은 이세 가지 중에서 매년 한 가지씩을 선택하게 됩니다. 그런데 졸업을 할 때까지 이세 가지를 모두 다 해야 하는 것은 아닙니다. 그 중에서 두 가지만 하시면 됩니다. 그러니까 매년 하는데 예를 들어서 인턴십을 두번 하고 뭐 리서치를 두번 한다든지 
아니면 뭐 서비스 러닝을 하면 뭐 1년 뭐다세 가지 해도 상관없습니다만 이세 가지를 모두 다 해야만 졸업하는 것은 아닙니다. So we'll be getting into a little bit about what each of these programs looks like. Uh, students have also been through this material as well, but you will also see that in the handout that you have, um, there's still a couple of things on the back table. We're just diving a little bit into what an internship really looks like, what service learning looks like, and what research and discovery looks like. But a big part of this is also answering the question of why this is so important and valuable to our students. And I've been having that conversation with students along the way. Our seniors especially said, oh, Ms. Hang, it's right at the end of our senior year. Why are we doing this? You're making us do something new. But what we really are hoping for our students is that they have these really unique learning experiences that prepare them for any type of opportunity that they'll have or that they'll face in university. When we're talking about this with the students, I said, in university, you're going to have opportunities to do things very similar to this. You might have an undergraduate research opportunity or an internship opportunity, and I want our students to walk into those opportunities with some confidence, saying, I've experienced this before, I can do this. And they can say to that future employer or that research professor, I've done this, I know what I'm doing, and I'm excited about that opportunity. And I want them to shy away from those opportunities in university. I want them to be prepared for that. And so that's a big part of what we're helping students to do. Not only are we giving them these experiences, we're also helping build those skills that they need in order to be ready to take those things on once they leave our school and our community. So helping them build those connections and form that foundation of understanding will give them another kind of leg up once they get out of school and go beyond our walls where they normally feel so comfortable. And so this offers them a safe space to do that. They're not trying to tackle an internship for the first time when they're in a new location. They don't have a support system and they're not sure what they're doing. They're doing that with the safety of being here, having a mentor, having people set up some structures for them. And they might have the experience where they walk in they start maybe their research and discovery project, and a week in, they say like, whoa, this isn't working. I had a plan, and now I don't know what's going on, and that's okay, because they'll have a mentor to guide them through that process. So it's a safe place to try something challenging and difficult, and maybe it won't work out perfectly. And when we start talking about scoring and assessment, we're not saying, oh, you know, to get an A on this, you have to have the most picture-perfect experience. We're saying, okay, what happened? What did you learn? How did you handle it? How have you grown? All of those things are really valuable to these experiences. 그 뒤쪽에 그 핸드아웃들이 있는데요. 거기에 이제 각각 물론 이제 저희가 또 오늘 설명을 드리겠지만, 인턴십은 어떤 거고, 프로젝트는 어떤 거고, 서비스 러닝은 어떤 거고, 거기 좀더더 자세하게 나와 있습니다. 근데 이제 이런 질문들을 저희가 봤습니다. 이제 곧 이제 졸업하는 이제 지금 12학년들은 아 이제 다 끝났는데 왜 이런 걸 하느냐 여기까지도 나오는데요. 사실 대학교 가가지고 이제 공부의 일 끝이 아니기 때문에 대학교 가가지고 똑같이 어떻게 생각하면 인턴십이든지 프로젝트라든지 그런 걸 하게 돼 있습니다. 그렇지만 이 고등학교 APIs 안에서 하게 되는 것은 어떻게 생각하면 굉장히 안전하게 그것에 대한 첫 발을 딛는다고 생각하시면 될 겁니다. 이제 대학교 가가지고 진짜 도와주지 않는 상태에서 인턴십을 시작해야 하는지 혼자서 언더그레이션 리서치를 해야 하는 것보다는 여기에서는 일단 물론 대학교 가가지고 하지 말라는 거니 대학교 반드시 해야 하고요. 근데 가기 전에 어떻게 생각하면 그것을 더 쉽게 할수 있는 디딤돌이라고 생각하시면 되고요. 인턴십이 됐든 프로젝트가 됐든 서비스 러닝이 됐든 학교에서 각각 멘토가 어사인이 될 겁니다. 그래서 멘토를 통해 가지고 아 이건 이런 식으로 우리가 해결하자. 라고 넘어갈 수가 있기 때문에 굉장히 그 여러분의 그 자녀분들이 이런 이제 또 대학교 그 다음 그 대학교 후에도 어 이런 걸 하는 곳에 훨씬 더 그게 쉽게 그 들어갈 수 있을 거라고 생각됩니다. Alright, so now I will invite Ms. Meyer to come forward and speak a little bit about internships, giving you a better understanding of what those really involve and what that might look like for our students. Okay, good evening everyone. Um, when we started thinking about a program like this a couple of years ago, um, one of the first things that turned us in this direction is I was speaking with some um, students who were juniors going into their senior year, and they were describing how they were trying to find internships. 
and how difficult it was to try to find one during the summer and try to find one on their own and trying to find one that you know really matched what they were interested in. And from that initial idea, this bigger and larger uh, program began. But for me, this internship part of it is really an important piece. So I'm happy to speak about this with you today. So one of the options that um, our students will have during the month of May is to participate in an internship. This could be any student, grade 9, 10, 11, or 12. And we encourage them to you know, start with an idea of what they're really interested in. Don't try to limit their internship opportunities to maybe you know, something a parent does or, or someone they know, but really think about what they're interested in. Um, and that internship in the end might teach them that whatever they've chosen doesn't really fit with what they thought it was. Uh, as a student, I did an internship that told me, no, I don't want to do that thing. And that was a good experience to learn that. Um, the internship could be anything from um, actually working in a, in a job, in a business, to maybe more of a shadowing role. In other words, you know, just kind of watching and seeing and, and being there as a, a bystander. It could vary from every day for a full day to maybe a few days a week. So we have some flexibility in what that internship might look like. Okay. 인턴십이라고 해가지고 물론 고등학생 레벨에서 인턴십에서 특히 이 소피스틱에 있는 그런 인턴십이 많이 없을 겁니다. 근데 그때는 괜찮습니다. 그때는 어떻게 생각하면 그냥 이런 거를 하는 사람들을 따라다니면서 우리 샤도잉이라는 것도 하는데요. 샤도잉 해가지고 배우는 것도 있을 거고 좀 12학년, 12학년 가서 그거를 좀더 실제적으로 뭔가를 해보는 것들도 있겠죠. 그래서 이 모든 것들이 반드시 꼭 이제 그 여러분이나 그 아니면 주위 뭐이 자녀분의 그 부모님이 직접 하시는 일하고 관계가 돼야 한다는 그런 것도 아니고 어쨌든 완전히 새로운 어프티니를 찾아도 되는 겁니다. 그래서 이것들을 할때 이제 여기도 써 있지만 어, 이 멘토가 API에서도 한 명이 그 정해지게 되고 그다음에 그 실제적으로 인턴을 하는 쪽에서도 멘토가 주어지게 됩니다. 어, 참고로 저희가 하와이 캠퍼스에서는 이게 시작한 지가 벌써 어, 2년이 넘었었어요 인턴십을 그렇게 됐었을 때. 거기에서도 이제 제 아들 경우 이제 하와이 졸업하면서 거기서는 그이 관광이 많다 보니까 그 사람들이 하와이에서 많이 가는 그 관광 그 명소에서 그 마케팅 쪽으로 들어가 가지고 어떤 때 진짜 투어 가이드도 하고 그다 마케팅하는 그런 그 뉴트리얼도 준비하고 하는 그런 인턴을 했는데 굉장히 좀그 많은 것을 배웠던 것 같습니다. So we're going to talk about each of the three options and kind of what they have in common. Um, so you'll hear more about internships in a little bit, but I just want to point out some things that might be a little different. Um, the mentor that the APIS provides for the student in the internship has a role in the beginning of maybe talking to the student about what it's like to be a professional at a workshop. So maybe the mentor will lead, or at a job. So maybe the mentor will lead a workshop to help the students understand how to write a professional email, how to fill out a resume, some of those preparation things that they need to do before they go to the job. So that's part of the mentor's role, and that will happen to prepare those students. But also the mentor will be checking in with the student regularly about their internship and some of the requirements, and the mentor will be actually going to the site of the job, uh, the internship, to see what the student is doing there. So that's the APIS mentor. At the internship site itself, there will also be an adult who we will call a mentor, who's the point person there for talking back and forth between APIS and the job. So that structure will be a little bit different, but I just want to emphasize that our role in providing this program is that we are here to help the students to find this internship and to set up a mentor here for them at APIS and at their other internship. So I don't want you to feel like there's pressure on you to go out and try to find some internship and some mentor for your child. That is part of our role. We would appreciate you know, help in different ways, and we'll talk about that later. 
but please don't feel like we're putting this uh, extra pressure on you to do that. 그 인턴십에는 멘토가 그두 명의 멘토가 있습니다. 하나는 API 안에 APIs 안에서의 멘토입니다. 그 멘토는 이제 이 이제 실제적으로 인턴십에 들어가기 전에 아 그러면 우리가 이제 인턴을 하기 전에 뭐 예를 들어서 직장에서는 어떤 식으로 옷을 입고 가야 되지? 어떤 식으로 말을 해야 되지? 이메일은 어떻게 써야지? 그런 이제 약간 좀 프로페셔널 세팅에서 해야 하는 거라든지 그런 것들을 배우게 되고 실제적으로 가서는 이제 인턴으로 가는 동안에는 거기에 사이트에 멘토가 당연히 있을 겁니다. 그래서 그분하고도 당연하게 일을 해야지만 API에 있는 멘토하고도 계속해서 체크백을 하면서 우리가 지금까지 배운 게 뭐고 현재 지금 문제가 뭐고 이런 식으로 지금 하고 있다라는 것을 계속 커뮤니케이트하게 되고 API의 멘토가 실제적으로 그 사이트에 한번 이상 방문을 하게 될 겁니다. 그래서 어떤 식으로 지금 인턴을 하고 있는지를 보게 될 것입니다. 이또이 저기 인턴십을 말씀드리게 되면 많은 분들이 또아 그러면 내 아들 내 딸을 위해서 내가 인턴을 다 잡아줘야 하느냐? 그거는 아닙니다. 물론 도움이 되면 도움을 주실 수 있으면 되게 대단히 좋지만 그것에 이제 이제 이런 어퍼티니가 있을 수 있다는 걸 학교에 또 알려주시고 그럼 저희가 그것을 학교가 지금 가지고 있는 네트워크 합쳐가지고 여러분의 학생들의 인턴을 인턴십을 찾는데 같이 도움을 드릴 것입니다. 그래서 반드시 아 이제 내 딸의 인턴십을 내가 찾아야 한다라고 그렇게 프레셔를 받으실 필요는 없습니다. Okay, now I'll ask Ms. Hain to return back to talk about research projects. So our research and discovery experience asks students to follow kind of two parts of a pathway. That first part is research. We want students to decide something that they're really excited about learning. And that might be an extension of what they've learned at school. So it might be in a core subject area or an elective area, or it might be something that they really want to learn about, but it's not a course that we offer. And so they'll start in that area, really researching and learning deeply about that. And then the discovery portion is what can you do with this new learning? Because we don't want them to just intake the new learning. We want them to do something active with that. And so that might be designing a product or a program. It might be sharing their learning with others in the community. But what we want to make sure happens is a deep learning in an area that they're excited about. Um, when we started working through this with students, we found that there are actually a whole handful of students at our school really interested in, in fashion and design, which is not necessarily a course we have to offer, but a really important thing and may lead to career opportunities later or options for them to really express themselves artistically. And so that would be an area where they could do research, they could learn those new skills, and then they can do something active with that. Because at the end of this, what we really want is a student to say, you know what? I took this on, I learned something, I'm really passionate about it, and look what I've done with it. Look what I've created, and I'm really proud of that. And so this is an opportunity where maybe they're not ready to take that into a job site yet, or maybe they're just exploring this area for the first time and they really want to dive into something. We want to support them in doing that. This research and discovery is that your students are learning from the beginning of the day, but they don't have any connection to it. We have two of them. When we did the survey, we had a lot of interest. 많은 학생들이 관심이 있었던 것이 그 패션 쪽이었었습니다. 근데 패션 쪽은 당연하게 저희가 이제 이렇게 지금 가르치는 과목이 아니지만 이런 거에 대해서 여러분의 학생이 배워보고 싶어하는 그런 것들이 또 나왔는데요. 그래서 배우는 것이 이제 또 한쪽이라면 그 다음은 뭐냐면 이 배운 것을 가지고 활용하는 겁니다. 어떤 그 제품을 한번 디자인을 해본다든지 어떤 프로그램을 프로그램을 배웠으면 그 프로그램을 가지고 실제 프로그램을 만들어 본다든지 아니면 어떤 그 실제 지금 리서치를 해본다든지 하는 어떤 아웃풋을 만드는 것을 통해서 여러분의 자녀분들이 배우고 그것을 실제적으로 활용하는 기회를 가지게 하고 싶습니다. This is again, again, like Ms. Meyer said, we're we'll starting with that mentor or working with them about skills that they, they really need to develop. develop. And so, so really, really, do they understand the research process? Do they, they have that guy that, 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 that they need to go through designing that guy questions, questions, finding, finding the credible information, information, learning those, those skills. skills? So we'll be running some workshops with the students on how to do that and really find those practical skills. And then for some students, they might need to be doing some research at school. 
they might, they might be doing, doing some research, research off campus. Maybe they can visit a company or a job site they were doing and learn about that. So, so we have a flexible schedule whether they're spending time here or spending time off campus. We're, we're not, not going to just say, well, we'll see you in a month with your project. project. Good luck. <laughs> That's and not how we help them do success, success as we're working as it. But they will have that, that flexibility. You know, I found this organization, organization and I really wanted to, to interview this person or I wanted to shadow the day, day how this product is being made. Um, we, we also, also have teachers, teachers in the building and they want to do coding and 3D design. We want to have teachers in other areas. areas. And, and so they'll also have that support here to be working on skills and working on that design of their area project too. So it'll be a very flexible schedule. Okay. And part of what we're doing along the way is helping students do the planning out how, how does that, that time need to look in order to create what you want to create at the end of this time. 네, 그 인턴십하고 마찬가지로 여기서 멘토가 주어지게 됩니다. 그 멘토하고 인턴십하고 똑같이 가장 처음에 하는 것은 워크샵을 가지게 됩니다. 그래서 워크샵을 통해서 어떤 식으로 리서치를 해야 하는지 진짜 예를 들어서 어떤 프로젝트를 한다고 했을 때 내가 이번에 그 해결하고 있는 하고자 싶은 문제가 뭔지를 디파인 정의하는 것부터 그걸 어떻게 나누는 것 이런 스킬들을 배우게 되고 실제적으로 리서치에 들어가게 됩니다. 리서치 들어간다고 해서 그 동안에 아까 지금 매그 교장 선생님 말씀하신 것처럼 한달 후에 보자 돌아오지 말아라라는 건 아닙니다. 나가서 뭔가를 할 수도 있고 어떤 사람과 인터뷰를 해야 할 수도 있겠죠. 어떤 사람한테 샤도우를 할 수도 있겠죠. 안에서 여기서 그냥 뭔가를 공부할 수도 있고 또 학교 안에 있는 뭐 3D 프린터가 됐던 목공실이 됐던 뭔가를 실제적으로 해야 하는 이커먼트가 학교 안에 있는 것도 많으니까 여기서 쓰는 것도 충분히 가능합니다. 그래서 이 모든 것은 고등학생에게 약간의 섹션을 하게 되죠. We really want to encourage students to be creative in this process as well. And that might be a little bit outside of what they're used to and what they're comfortable with. But again, it's that challenge of producing something impactful for their learning. And so, so outside, outside of this project, we have some of the like, composed music that the orchestra has to say. We've had students to put on our art galleries. We've had all sorts of things. We want to take more students that have opportunity. And that's why we really do research and discover that way to open up that chance for them to really express themselves and to really progress on something that they think they have created. 그래서 제가 뭐 예를 들어서 자초교에 대한 관심이 있는 학생들은 진짜 제가 자초 컴컴 것을 학생들에게 꼭꼭한 말이 할 된다든지 아니면 그 뭔가를 자초 작품을 만들 때 관심이 있으면 자기가 자초 작품을 만들 것도 관련해서 그걸 개별로 예를 가지고 전시회를 한다든지 방법들은 여러 가지가 많은 것입니다. And then I'll invite Ms. McRoberts to come speak about the service learning experience as well. And then we'll be talking from that beyond what do these programs have in common and what will we be doing in order to get there. So we would just want to give you a little introduction to each of them first. So. Thank you, everyone. And also thank you for coming on a kind of a odd weather day. It's not the best day outside. So thank you for that extra effort. I'm here to talk a little bit about service learning. So service learning is for our students who are really engaged in community and like our activism students. So they want to do something in the community that will make an impact. So on one hand, we have the service part. So going and volunteering. We're going to combine it also with the academic part. So doing something while they're out in the community, trying to make a difference, and also measuring if that was able to make a difference and in what way. Service learning이라고 했었을 때는 저희는 이것이 간단하게 그냥 우리가 얘기하는 그 volunteer service에서 끝마친 것만을 얘기하는 것은 아닙니다. 그래서 volunteer service를 하고 거기서 뭔가 실제적으로 learning을 우리가 같이 이걸 만들어보자 라는 것인데요. 예를 들어서 그 여러분의 그 학생들 중에서 또 많은 학생들은 student club, 예를 들어서 그 많은 바로 아니면 바로 서비스에서 했다라는 것이 아니라 그거 후에 어떠한 learning이 있는 것을 저희는 하고 있습니다. 이것도 똑같이 멘토가 주어지고 그 멘토하고 같이 어떤 식으로 이 본인의 이 서비스 러닝을 하겠다라는 그 어떤 준비를 한 다음에 들어가게 되어 있습니다. So as the students are learning, we do have a lot of students who are passionate about something that is already involved. And a lot of times, what happens when they go out in the community, they come back and they say, "Oh, I volunteered a hundred hours." And then someone says, "What does what I learn?" And they kind of they pause a little bit. <laughs> and this, and this is designed to help them 
yes, so what? So what? So what did so you what did you do after really you did you what did you what how did you how did you impact the animals? The animals. How did you help help people who are people who are poverty? It's really trying to trying to so what so what piece. It becomes really essential a lot of different different avenues. Such as scholarships, such as college interviews, and also and also they are they are as people characters of citizenship. ゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲストゲスト
maybe halfway across, across the world, the world really, really, really to begin with. with. They're here. They're here. They're here. We're, we're ready, to ready to support them. And then the third and the piece, third piece of that is to make to make the connection connection because we, we want, want our we want our student to have a strong have a strong community, community in our building, building. But, but there's so, there's so much, more much more that soul that soul has, has to offer and we want and we want connecting our students, students with that with that community and we'll talk a little bit about about how parents can be involved in that process, process too but there's so there's so many other so learn from and that they can connect connect people in the area of interest or in something that students are excited about we want to help them also understand that learn that learn just the way senior citizens are asking about to or teacher, teacher, that you that you make those connections and there's so, so many resources, resources to learn from outside, outside of our building. And so with so all, all of our pathways, our pathways, pathways these are these are three of our schools to help our to help students, our students accomplish. accomplish. で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、で、
creation, creation works, works and how that, how that works, works. But, but please know, please know that it's not that it's just, just the success of the end point of point project project with their program. It's a process, process all the way through there and there and walking through that. Through that. ウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウィルトゥーウ
어떤 식으로 우리가 변경을 했고 그래서 내가 주어진 시간 안에 이런 것을 할 수가 있었다라는 것을 보여주게 하고 싶습니다. So we wanted to give you as parents also an update on our current progress. And this is actually a little bit out of date because this was before the, we created this presentation before their first due date. But we had student meetings all through October. We met with every grade level and talked through all of this process with students. So we introduced them to the idea of what are these three different pathways? What do those look like? And then we had them go through a brainstorming activity about their interests and their passions. And so we asked them in areas of interest in their careers, interest in their hobbies or things that they want to learn more about, and their interest in global issues. And so that kind of followed our three pathways. And then we had them narrow this down. And I think the most interesting part to me was when students would pitch two of these ideas up against each other and they're like, oh, I really like both of them. And so we'd say, okay, don't scratch it totally off your list yet, but really think about what matters to you most. What would you want to be pursuing for a whole month at the end of this year and learning? Because we don't want you to choose a project or an area of research or an internship because your best friend thinks it's cool who's sitting next to you, but because it's something you really want to do. And so we went through that process with them to start that brainstorming. Um, so they have Google Classroom full of resources that explain each of these. They also have the bracket that they used for their brainstorming project. And then um, at the end of that session, we asked them to kind of rank where your top interests at and start thinking about, okay, does that fit more in an internship? A research and discovery or a service learning experience. 네, 지금 그 저희가 이제 PTC 때 만든 자료에서 조금 이제 늦어지게 됐는데요. 10월 동안에 했던 것은 그 여러분의 학생들이 그리고 이제 MPCS가 뭐냐라는 거에 대해서 다시 이제 강의하고 토의가 있었고 그 다음에 브레인스토밍을 각각 시작했습니다. 본인이 관심 있는 분야가 뭔가 어떤 이제 관심 있는 어떤 토픽이 있냐 어떤 이제 이 사회적인 주제로 이거를 뭔가를 하고 싶은 것이 있는지 그런 여러 가지 브레인스토밍을 한 다음에 그거를 랭킹을 하기 시작했습니다. 어느 것에 진짜 본인이 더 관심이 있는지 그렇게 하고 나서 그것을 인턴십으로 접근하는 게 좋은 거지 아니면 프로젝트성으로 접근하는 게 나은 건지 서비스 러닝으로 접근하기 좋은 건지에 대해서 어느 정도 감을 가지기 시작했었습니다. And next up, this was a surprise to many parents, um, but we had asked them by November 4th to have a conversation with you. We wanted them to talk to their advisors, their friend groups, all of those, but also to talk to their parents about input on their idea. Because we also let them know, reminded them that your parents are a wealth of experiences and resources too, and they might have some insight to offer you. And mostly we wanted you to also be involved in this brainstorming and planning process. Hopefully they have this conversation with you. If they haven't, it's not too late. <laughs> and they know that you're coming and they know that we're telling you this. And so it might just be you instigating that conversation first. Even if they've already filled out their form of interest, we really still want to encourage you to be part of this process. Nothing is set in stone yet. So what we'll be doing with students next up over the next three weeks is we'll be meeting with them in student groups and helping them really flesh out, okay, does your idea really match the pathway you've chosen? And is, are you sure that's the pathway you'd like to go down? And maybe at the end of that, some of them go, you know what, I thought I was ready for an internship, but I think maybe I want to do research and discovery in this area, and that's fine. That's what we're trying to help them determine during that time. But again, I really encourage you, if you haven't had that conversation with your student yet, it's definitely not too late to start talking about it. 11월 4일이니까 벌써 지났는데요. 저희가 이제 PTC 하는 동안에 이것을 첫 그룹한테 하시니까 부모님들이 많이 놀라셨어요. 왜냐하면 그때까지는 아, 물론 이제 아직까지 데드라인은 아니었지만 이것을 실제적으로 우리 학생들이 부모님하고 의논을 하지 않았던 의논을 했던 분들이 거의 없었던 것 같아요. 아직까지는요. 그래서 11월 4일까지인데 여러분의 학생들이 여러분과 이거에 대해서 의논을 하셨으면 좋고 만약에 혹시 안 하셨으면 지금이라도 그 여러분의 학생들한테 한번 해서 이런 거 지금 어떻게 생각하고 있니? 무엇을 하고 있니? 한번 얘기를 해, 해 주시기 바랍니다. 이제 학생들이 물론 이제 다른 친구들하고 또 선생님하고도 얘기를 많이 했지만 사실 우리 부모님처럼 또 많이 그 그래도 사회생활이라든지 아시는 것들이 있으니까 도움이 줄수 있는 게 굉장히 많거든요. 그래서 이런 것을 통해 가지고 준비를 하는 거고 여기서 중요한 거는 
지금 11월 4일이 지났다고 해서 이 프로젝트를 하겠다라고 우리가 완전히 딱 세팅한 것이 아닙니다. 이런 것을 하고자 하자라는 것에 대해 가지고 계속해서 서로 얘기를 하면서 이게 진짜 맞는지 아닌지를 지금 계속해서 지금 쫓겨나가는 과정이니까 이것이 딱 이미 이걸 하기로 결정됐으니까 높은 움직여라는 것이 아니기 때문에 지금이라도 같이 의논을 하시길 바랍니다. 혹시 안 하셨습니다. And once we help the students decide officially on their pathway, then they'll be separated usually into those groups from here on out. Because the way we approach an internship, the way we approach research and discovery, and the way we approach a service learning are going to be a little bit different in how we help the students to write proposals and plan. But what we want to do first is make sure that the students really know that that is the area that they would like to pursue. 그래서 이제 어떤 거를 하고 싶은지 이제 일단 결정이 될 때까지 이제 여러 가지 얘기가 나오고 있지만 일단 결정이 되기 나면 이게 이제 이거 진짜 이제 인턴십이 되겠다 아니면 프로젝트성이 되겠다 아니면 서비스 러닝이 되겠다 그러면 이제는 그 우리 학생들이 세개 그룹으로 나뉘게 됩니다 왜냐하면 인턴십 그룹에서 서로 준비하는 것들이 프로젝트성에서 하는 거하고 틀리기 때문에 나눠 가지고 우리가 앞으로 계속 준비를 하게 될 것입니다. And with the resource that you have in front of you, this is a general parent guide, kind of the round one parent guide. As soon as your student has officially decided on their pathway, you'll also get kind of that next phase of, okay, as a parent, how do you help your student through the next planning process based on what they have selected? And so you'll also get resources that are catered to that decision. 그래서 여러분이 가지고 있는 거는 저희 이제 페런트 가이드의 가장 첫 부분이고 이제 여러분의 학생이 예를 들어서 인턴을 하기로 결정했다 그러면 또 그때부터 또, 또 다시 생, 다 성, 설명하시고 생각하셔야 하는 것이 틀리니까 어떻게 생각하고 두 번째 챕터를 또 따로 이제 그때도 딱 받으시게 될 것입니다. And like I said, with these next meetings, we'll really be helping students target their ideas and what they want to be doing. We'll also start with goal setting because that's a really big part of the proposal. And what do students want to get out of this project? And what are their goals in their learning? And then we'll be helping them to establish a timeline so that they have an idea of Here's what needs to happen by the end of May. So what do you need to be doing now in order to prepare for that? Because what we don't want to have happen is a student gets to the beginning of this and doesn't feel ready and feels overwhelmed. So we want to help them work backwards in their planning. So 11월, 12월 동안에 하게 되는 것은 이제 그 어떤 에리아를 하기로 결정이 됐었으면 그러면 우리가 생각하는 고울이 뭐냐, 진짜 엔드 아웃풋이 뭐냐라는 것을 생각하게 되고 엔드 아웃풋이 진짜 6월 5일에 나와야 하는 엔드 아웃풋이 무엇이니까 그때까지 어떤 것이 들어가야지 라고 하는 어떤 이제 우리 전체적인 타임라인들을 만들게 됩니다. 그렇게 해야 진짜 5월 6일에 갔었을 때 갑자기 우리 뭐 해야지 그것이 아니라 아 이것을 해야 하니까 우리가 뭐한 1, 2월 때까지 뭐가 있어요. 3, 4월까지 뭐가 준비가 되고 준비를 해야 우리가 실제로 5월에 가가지고 좀더그이 알찬 그 시간이 됐기 때문에 So beyond that, in semester two, what our goals for the students are, is for them to begin working with that APIS mentor. And so teachers will have a small group of students all following the same area or pathway, and they'll start working together to be building a few things. So building their action plan is the biggest part of that. And then also starting to construct that online portfolio. So as they're planning and going through it, they can add to that portfolio rather than trying to create that at the end of their project. 그래서 이제 이 학기에 들어가게 되면 여기 써 있고 있으면 이제 APIS에서 그 정한 그 멘토하고 만나게 되고 그 다음에 아까 그큰 고울과 타임라인이 나왔으니까 그것을 좀더 디테일하게 된 액션 플랜으로 만드는 작업을 하게 됩니다. 그게 중요한 것은 이것을 그냥 프로젝트를 했다, 인턴십을 했다, 서비스 러닝을 했다 해서 끝나는 것이 아니라 이것을 하나하나 우리가 도큐멘테이션을 해서 우리가 배운 것들, 우리가 어떤 걸 했다는 걸 가지고 4년 동안 어떻게 생각하면 이것을 온라인 포트폴리오를 만드는 겁니다. 그것을 그거는 우리 학생들이 졸업할 때 가지고 갈수 있는 것들입니다. 그래서 난 이런 진짜 이런 행보를 했고 이때 이때 어떤 행동을 했고 어떤 것을 배웠다라는 것을 온라인 상으로 만드는 포트폴리오를 만들게 되는데요. 그 작업들을 이제 이야기 들어가면서 준비하게 됩니다. And so this is another part of where you come in and here are opportunities to be involved. So again, that first step, if you have not yet started discussing this with your student, we really want you to do that. But we want you to be part of that ongoing conversation. Once they've made their decision, they're starting to build their proposal, we want you to be part of that process. When they're building their action plan, sometimes students don't necessarily listen to the feedback of parents or teachers, but we think it's a really important part of that process 
because we've all been through experiences similar to this, either in university or in our workplaces, and hopefully we can offer some of that insight to the students as well. So those discussions are really valuable, even if your student isn't as excited about those discussions. They're still really important to have. Um, we also have a parent survey that Ms. Meyer is going to be handing out. Um, that is the opportunity if you either would really like to be involved in hosting a student or being an expert in your field or you know someone that is, this is an opportunity for you to be part of that larger community that we network our students with. Or if you know somebody that you work with or that you're friends with that you think would really enjoy being part of this process, we would love to invite them to do that as well. And if an outside person or organization wants to work with our students, we will give them very detailed expectations of what we would like them to do, how we can partner with them. They don't have to create all of that themselves, um, but we would really love to expand this network as much as possible. And then also to make sure that you read through the parent guide. And again, as that next round of the parent guide comes out and how to guide your students, it's just a great resource. And so we'd love for you to be able to read through that, ask us questions if you need to, and just make sure that you're an active part of your students learning. 그래서 여기 써 있는 대로 세 가지인데요. 일단 그 여러분의 학생들과 그 만약 지금까지 안 하셨으면 어떤 분야에 관심이 있고 왜 그런지 그러면 또 이것을 뭐 관심이 있는 분야를 진행하려면 뭐가 좀 필요할지에 대해 가지고 여러분의 자녀분과 얘기를 해보시는 게 필요할 거고요. 지금 그 오늘 나눠드린 서베이를 그 나가실 때까지 작성해 가지고 주십시오. 그래서 이것이 만약 그 여러분들이 어떤 식으로 이, 이 전체적인 저희가 이제 API 사이에서 가지고 있는 그런 그 네트워크도 있지만 여러분의 네트워크를 활용해서 우리가 그 많은 기회들을 우리가 학생들한테 주고 싶으니까 거기에 대해서 좀 생각하시는 분이 있어 어떤 자료가 있으면 같이 주면 되겠고 그 다음에 여기서 있는 대로 패런트 파일도 한번 읽어보시길 바랍니다. And part of that survey also um, it leaves a spot to volunteer for career day, which is something that we started last spring and we're going to continue to do, which is just another great resource for our students to connect with experts in the field and to get exposed to lots of different types of careers. So we encourage you to also be involved in that or volunteer a friend if you have one. But the more experiences and connections we have for our students, the easier it will be for them to start building those networks. So we really encourage you to get the community involved as well. 그래서 여러분이 아는 그이 네트워크에 한번 이런 것들을 좀 타신을 해보시는 것도 좋고 또그 3월 31일 날 화요일이네요. 그날 이제 K2 투어 커리어 대회가 있습니다. 거기 커리어 대회에 뭐 직접 나와가지고 그이 말씀해 주셔도 좋고 또 이제 아시는 분들을 소개해가지고 이런 그 오프티니를 주시는 것도 좋을 것 같습니다. <웃음> And part of that survey also, um, it leaves a spot to volunteer for career day, which is something that we started last spring and we're going to continue to do, which is just another great resource for our students to connect with experts in the field and to get exposed to lots of different types of careers. So we encourage you to also be involved in that or volunteer a friend if you have one. But the more experiences and connections we have for our students, the easier it will be for them to start building those networks. So we really encourage you to get the community involved as well. 그래서 여러분이 아주 화요일이네요. 그날 이제 K2 투어 커리어 대회가 있습니다. 거기 커리어 대회에 뭐 직접 나와가지고 그이 말씀해 주셔도 좋고 또 이제 아시는 분들을 소개해가지고 이런 그 오프티니를 주시는 것도 좋을 것 같습니다. And now I'm sure that you have some questions, and so thank you for patiently waiting through the presentation to ask those. But what we will ask is that if you have a question that's kind of a broader question or for the good of the whole, we'd be happy to take those. If you have a more personal question about halfway for your student or one of those ideas, um, Ms. McRoberts, Ms. Meyer, and myself will stick around and you can ask those one to one. But if you have some of those bigger picture questions right now, we would love to answer them because you're probably not the only person with that question. <laughs> 그 질문이 있으시면 다 말씀해 주시는데요. 앞서서 제가 말씀드린 것은 질문을 한한세 가지 정도로 나눴으면 좋겠습니다. 첫 번째는 이제 그냥 그 여러분들이 같이 오셨으니까 이제 본인의 자녀뿐만이 아니라 좀 여러 명에게 좀 관여가 되겠다 하는 것을 우선 이 자리에서 해주시고 이거 끝나고 나면 그, 그 해인 교장 선생님이나 그 다음에 그 아만다 선생님이나 아니면 그 세라 선생님 여기 계실 거니까 좀더더 더 개인적인 여러분의 자녀에 관련된 질문을 하실 수가 있고. 또 이때도 지금 아직은 모르겠는데 
뭐그 후에 뭐그 관유 생각나신 게 있다 그러면 이메일이든지 전화든지 언제든지 세 분한테 중에 아무나 하시면 이세분 선생님들께 다시 그 토의하셔가지고 답변을 드리도록 하겠습니다. 그래서 지금 질문 어떤 질문이든지 좀 해주시 있으시면 해주시기 바랍니다. Um, we will do our best to match a good match between student and teacher. Some of that will be based on how many students are signed up for that category and how many teachers can take on that category as well. Um, because what we want to make sure that we do is when we have the group assigned with that mentor, that that group is in the same category to support one another, and that mentor isn't having to try and keep track of three different categories. But we're going to do our best to make that good match. It does go by, yeah. So by internship, research and discovery, or service learning. Research, <목소리도> <목소리도> 4년 동안에 두 가지를 하다라고 하는 겁니다. 그래서 뭐 이제 2년 동안 인턴을 했다든지 2년 그리고 이제 2년 동안 프로젝트를 한다든지 그이 것들은 그 다만 물론 이제 지금 현재 그 12학년은 이제 초이스가 한 분밖에 없으니까 한 가지만 하게 될 것입니다. And another small component to add, one of the reasons that we selected doing this at the end of the year rather than mid-year as well is for students who would like to continue work in that area, either whether that's independent research, whether that's an internship, we wanted that to roll right into summer for them to be able to expand those horizons. We had a few parents ask last time, what if they really get well matched with a service organization or a business for an internship and they'd like to continue with that? We would love to support helping them continue through to the future into the following school year with those connections as well. 그래서 이제 여기에서 그왜 5월에 하느냐? 5월 바로 이후에 이제 또 파이널 있고 그다음에 이제 그 여러분의 자녀들이 여름 방학을 갖게 되지 않습니까? 그러면 어떤 경우에 만 진짜 이런 거에 관심이 있다 그러면 그때 했던 것을 여름에 약간 컨티뉴 하는 그런 것도 가능할 거고요. 또 이것을 하고 나서 만약 진짜 그 인턴이 됐던 어떤 프로젝트에 대해서 좀더더 심화하게 그 다음 연도에 계속 하고 싶다. 그러면 그거는 저희가 이제 그 케이스 바이 케이스로 다 보겠지만 그 다음 스쿨 이어 동안에도 어떻게 이제 파트 타임을 하는 방법들을 저희가 같이 고민하게 될 것입니다. It is, absolutely. And for some students that are pursuing those as independent studies, this might correlate directly with what they're doing and give them the opportunity to really deeply expand that, or it might allow them to take on a different avenue within that independent study that they wouldn't normally have time to do. So maybe if they want to do some job shadowing or interning in that area that their regular schedule didn't allow for, this would then give them that opportunity. And we might have students that say, you know, I've done enough of that advanced top of year, I want something new, and that's okay too. They don't have to, but it is a great chance for those things to parallel one another. 
어드밴스 타픽을 하고 있는 학생들은 지금 하고 있는 것을 좀더 심화해서 어떤 부분을 할 수도 있고 아예 전혀 관계없는 다른 것을 할 수도 있습니다. The last question. Are they preparing these three advisory plots or when they find time to propose this? Good question. So we have done some alternative scheduling to make sure that each grade level has the opportunity to meet with us. So a few teachers have adjusted to give us a half of the block. Uh, a little bit of that might come through student club time or advisory time, but we're trying to spread it out so that it's not taking over one class or taking over advisory. But we schedule with each grade level to make sure that they have lots of time to do this. Great question. Okay. So, this is the advisory time. This is not the same thing. We have a grade level. We have a mentor. 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 Well, again, if you have a specific question, please feel free to stay and ask that, or these are all of our emails. And again, if you'll get a copy of this, please feel free to email us, or if you want to call or look at time with us, we'd be happy to explain more things. And then in the next three or so weeks, your students should be able to also update you on where they're at with their decision and what they've done in their grade level meetings. And uh, just keep those questions coming. If you've got them, we'd be happy to answer that. And thank you for being involved. It's really important for your students' learning. 네, 말씀드린 대로 그 내일 교장 선생님, 그 다음에 세양맥 선생님, 그 다음에 아만다 마이 선생님이 여기 계속 남아 계실 거니까 그 개별적인 질문이 있으시면 지금 하셔도 되고 또 지금이 아까 말씀드린 건 지금 당장이 아니더라도 여기 이메일 주소가 있으니까 어느 한 분에게도 이메일로 그냥 그, 그 질문을 해주면 저희가 답변을 드리도록 하겠습니다.